In this segment, I'm going to talk about my favorite topics. I love these are two metrics that I really love. MTI, and it helps if I use a good pen, but MTI and CDES. These are two metrics which when you apply them to clock signals, in particular time error signals, give you a lot of good information. So let's look at what these are. So we start off with some notion of the time error sequence, which is the sequence of numbers, and implicitly they are taken every t sub zero units of time apart. Now let's assume that we've done a measurement, we've got this time error sequence, and you've got n samples. If you have n samples, now we can compute m time and t on this endpoint uh, sequence. If you think about what is m time, number one. m time, if you look at the difference between, say, n, and I'll drop the t sub zero, n and x of n plus some other quantity. This is a time difference. If you look at the absolute value, it tells you what is the peak difference between at these two points. The whole idea in M time is to figure out what is the worst case of this difference for different values of N1. So, and when you show the uh, M time plot, the worst case value of this peak-to-peak -peak difference will show up at tau is equal to n, n times t sub zero, n one, sir. So the, you take a think of a difference in time and uh, how much the phase will change over that period of time and take the worst case. What happens if this uh, time error sequence included a non-zero y. And remember, the look term y was corresponding to the fre frequency offset. What this shows up in an m time curve is a straight line for large values of tau. So what one thing m time does tell you is if you look at it for large values of tau, if you see something which is non-zero, that means the clock which was generating this was not locked to the reference because it is showing a non-zero y. So that's one aspect. That's why I like m -tai. It tells you something about whether the lock is good or bad. Now how about t -def? t -def is a way of measuring the strength of this signal. And uh, what we are actually doing is looking at the signal. I'm going to show this as a, a, a DSP viewpoint. You take the, the sequence delayed by N1, you take the difference. You can see how much it has changed over a, uh, a period of N1. And actually you take the second difference and there's a, re there's a rationale for why you take the second difference. So you've taken a second difference now and what you're going to look at is the power of this output. And that, in a sense, is related to the t -def, or T-var sometimes as it's referred to. This t -def, the square root of T-var, is the variance uh, by considering intervals of time N1. And uh, it turns out that that kind of a metric gives you great insight into the kind of noise you're looking at. So, if you look at phi of t, the noise, and you look at t dev as a function of tau. Tau is, you know, think of it as n1 times t sub zero. If this noise is white noise, the t dev curve will look like slope of one. If the noise has a, what is called a flicker component, it will look flat. If the noise has a random walk component, it goes up. And generally speaking, white noise is the only benign type of noise that we would expect. So if you see TDEF going up like that, it's a worrisome thing because it has a random walk. So more next time.